like for real the sort of part of the roadmap the first part of the roadmap right so i'm going to be spending in, you know sort of the first quarter of this year um really kind of trying to grind through um quantum mechanics exercises like i set out to um learn quantum mechanics from scratch uh i guess i guess the way that i started this was more like taking a look at um, stephen wolfram's model trying to understand how that plugs in uh but i think that needs a bit of a detour because that's going what i'll be focusing on rather in march april so i'll be i'll be more like trying to understand and and this this is really what i've been trying to do in the past weeks and months sporadically because i haven't had a lot of time but i'm planning to do that a bit more um um a bit more uh, aggressively um from now on which is basically well i you know i've been taking a look at the, at the postulates right so and there's a great resource for these, which is also, which is uh, basically quantum country, which it's it's great. And then also been taking a look at the Wikipedia quantum mechanics. And I think I, I think I've got a good grasp in general of the whole thing, right? And also just because of the spending like over three hundred hours on the quantum on, on quantum computing, like for the past year and a half or so. Um, but now, like it, it almost feels like. It almost feels like if you don't really, if you don't really go ahead and 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 you know try to solve exercises, that you'll not really fully. It, it's it's almost like you're fooling yourself, right? In terms of knowing or not knowing certain things. And uh, I've been taking a look at the Schrodinger equation, understanding what the Schrodinger equation means, and and I think that I've got a good grasp of these in general. But it still feels like. You kind of don't have that insight, so I think, and and I and I mean, I think that's a well-proven self-study method. Just, just you know, jump in, jump right into the um, deep cold water, and you know, kind of start from exercises and see what are the things that you're um, expected to kind of solve um, with quantum mechanics in order to kind of then uncover everything else, right? Because basically. To, 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 to some, some of these kind of concepts are just like at the theory level you understand like it's i understand all that stuff the bracketation what a hamiltonian is and um i think most of the things i have like i'd say like a beginner grasp on um superposition not everything right so tunneling for example like i did i, I did the quantum um harmonic oscillator concept and the idea of you know how how to solve for the Schrodinger equation um but it's still <clears throat> yeah it still doesn't feel like i i wouldn't go and claim i know quantum mechanics that's the point and I'm, i really want to spend the next month um working hard on these and kind of trying to take a look at graduate graduate and undergraduate um exercises to be honest i really don't know i i found is the first this is the first thing that i found when i googled for exercises with solutions um they also claim in the intro of this book that um you can use that as a guide for self-study um i have absolutely no idea whether that's good source or not but i mean the the table of contents seems to be fairly aligned with what i've been reading around um and here it says this collection of quantum mechanics problems has grown out of many years of teaching the subject to undergrad and graduate students it is addressed to both student and teacher and is intended to be used as an external tool in class and self-study um the emphasis is on stressing the principles physical concepts and methods rather than supplying information for immediate use so the problems have been uh, designed primarily for the uh, for their educational value but they are also used to point certain properties and concepts worthy of interest an additional an additional aim is to condition the student to the atmosphere of change that will be encountered in the course of a career they usually long and consist of a number of related questions around a central theme solutions are presented in sufficient detail which is all which is good right because i i just don't want to see the final solution that once i get to something i want to compare um at least a line of thought to see if, if it's um if it if my line of thinking has been good um the degree of difficulty presented by the problems varies the approach requires an investment of time effort and concentration by the student um and aims at making him or her fit to deal with analogous problems in different situations mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah most subjects that are traditionally covered in undergraduate and graduate courses. In addition to these, the collection includes a number of problems corresponding to recent developments. So, I mean, 
what is the year from this book? I think I uh, okay, so we start with wave functions. That is 2005. I don't know, in terms of quantum mechanics, I don't think that a lot has changed in the past 15 years in terms of the basics of what is taught. So I think um, I think we should be good to go, but we'll see. At least, you know, at least we're going to get our hands dirty. And so I'll just literally go like one by one. So we'll start with problem one. And I am i don't want to look at the solution. And I'm not like, to be honest, I'm, I'm totally unprepared. I think that's the point of this whole thing. And I'm not going to... Um, I don't know how much I can dedicate to each session. That's just that's just how life looks like currently. Um, but I'll just I'll just go problem by problem. I won't move to the next one until I solve a problem or attempt to solve a problem, um, and at least understand the solution. And to be honest, I really don't know what I'm going to need. What I'm going to be doing these uh, with pen and paper. When I'm going to be trying to kind of reason that, write something down. Um, I'm. I'm literally unprepared so we'll see we'll adapt on the on uh, sort of as we go um are we streaming here we're streaming i think we're live yeah i think we're live again laggy as usual but that's going to change soon because i'm getting a new laptop mm, okay cool and uh because that's the goal. So this is what I'm going to be working on. Then take a look at stack exchange quantum mechanic questions, and then I'll see whether we can, you know, I can I can make any sense of the Wolfram's model. Um, and basically, because I, I got to the conclusion that the Wolfram's like the way they do this is sort of a, a very, very typical way of proving stuff, right? So you try to find a mapping of your model to an existing validated model, and so the way Wolfram does it is like they they map their model to um, the uh, path integral model, uh, and um, which I don't know if it will cover in here, to be honest. Is it in? Is it in the? Is there any about path integrals in here? Um, it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like, but I don't know. We'll see. Because that would be a cool thing to do as well, which what we will have to do um, if we want to approach the, the mapping. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Let's do that. We'll have to build up a lot of mathematical knowledge for this as well, because I guess that's a lot of a lot of the solutions will require that. But let's start from problem 1.1 in wave functions. Consider a particle and two normalized energy eigenfunctions. Okay, cool. I already have no idea what that means. <laughs> eigenfunctions, normalized energy eigenfunctions, um, corresponding to the eigenvalues. I guess I guess these are just wave functions, right? Um, the wave function, as in like solutions to the Schrodinger equation, and so they they then correspond to specific eigenvalues, which are then energy values. Uh, what are eigenfunctions? Uh, um, either one. So in mathematics, an eigenfunction of a linear operator defines. In Define its own function space is a non zero function. Uh... Oh, God. Yeah, well, it's like the concept of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, but it's an eigenfunction. In general, an eigenvector of a linear operator defined on some vector space is non-zero vector and indeed that is simply scaled by some scalar value. In a special case where D is defined on a function space, the eigenvectors are referred to as eigenfunctions. Okay. Hmm. It's quite abstract, but maybe there's some important properties that we need to know to solve the problem. So Assume that the eigenfunction vanish outside the two non-overlapping regions, omega one and omega two, respectively. So, so what is the problem? So we have here show that if the particle is initially in region omega one, then it will stay there forever. B. Let's read all the problem first. If initially, if initially the particle is in the state with the wave function. 
uh, I guess this is time zero, and that's a wave function of position. Um, so the particle is in a state that it's a linear combination, right, of, of, of this and that. Um, show that the probability density is independent of time. The probability density. Now assume that the two regions, omega 1 and omega 2, overlap partially. Um, starting with the initial wave function of case B, show that the probability density is a periodic function of time. I guess these are the regions as in like potential positions. I don't know, because it's an eigenfunction that they vanish. It's it's not positions, but it's like of this. God, that's an awful first exercise. Um, starting with the same initial wave function, and assuming that the two eigenfunctions are real and isotropic, take the two partially overlapping regions to be two concentric spheres, compute the probability current, probability current that flows through. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is the probability current? Oh, God. I love the German word, Wahrscheinlichkeit, Stromdichte. Probability flux, the flow of probability. Uh, probability is heterogeneous fluid, then the probability current is the rate of flow of this fluid. Mass currents, hydrodynamic. What the hell is this? That's a quantum. The probability current. It's also used as a quantum mechanics and the probability density functions. First of all, what's the probability density function? Let's let's just clarify that because that's part of the problem as well. In probability theory, probability density function or density of a continuous random variable is a function whose value at any given sample. Point in the sample space, the supersymmetric value taken by the random variable can be interpreted as providing a relative likelihood that the value um, okay, so that is just like the it's just a function that basically tells you what is the probability distribution, right? Probability density functions. That's the normal distribution, so you have the density. Uh, so that, that kind of tells you the probability of, of finding this specific value. Yeah. Cool. Um, back to the problem. Let's just let's just focus on on a show that if a particle is initially in region. But it, we're talking about like locating a particle, so it's it's. I guess I guess this is just nomenclature, right? But like an eigenfunction in this case is like, well, we're talking about like a wave function. I'm going to be assuming here, and so it's the, it's the it's the position wave function. So um, a function that tells you, you know, kind of where in that. Um, so where are you going to find the particle, or where can you find the particle, right? Um, so let's show with the information we have. Let's go about everything else. So show that the, if if it's in, in region lambda one, it will stay forever there. If it's initially there, it will stay forever there. So we, you have okay. So what do we have? So we have a particle in a in and two normalized energy eigenfunctions. So we have two eigenfunctions that correspond to two different, um, I guess, energy levels. Assume that the eigenfunctions vanish outside the two non-overlapping regions, respectively. Well, I mean, th these, these like, so how, how do we prove this? Because this seems to be like, maybe I'm getting that wrong, right? But it seems to be just trivially true. Like if you've got non-overlapping regions and
and and the the eigenfunctions that I guess like I, I mean we're not told that, but I don't know if if it's that one eigenfunction is referring to what are these things referring to, right? Um, assume that the eigenfunctions vanish outside the two non-overlapping regions. So this means, I'm assuming that, so what, what this means is that whatever these eigenfunctions actually, how do they relate to the particle, right? Um, if they are just talking about the potential positions of the particle and they vanish outside of these regions, then it means that you can't, like it means that you can't find a particle outside the region. So if you're in one region then and the two regions are non-overlapping, then you will never be able to transition from one region to another, right? Um, but I don't know how to mathematically... How to mathematically prove that. Maybe, maybe one way to do it would be that you... Uh, how would you even do that, right? Because you have... It, it, what's confusing me is that this, or I don't see anything that relates the, eigen, the, the, the wave functions to the actual a particle and two normalized energy eigenfunctions. Um, yeah, I guess they, they, you know. Assume that the eigenfunctions vanish outside of the two non-overlapping regions respectively. Ah, uh, res uh, Respectively. So, I mean, again, <laughs> I'm not native English, but I'm assuming, and maybe I'd assume that, that this eigenfunction refers to this region and that this eigenfunction refers to this region, right? Um, and so, if they vanish, like, well, what I try to do is I try to kind of say we have, um, let's just say we have a given Hamiltonian or something like that, that basically. Um, dictates how these wave function evolves. Um, like if there are no overlap, that's the, the thing is like, if they are not overlapping, you know, you can't transition, right? Because both, both vanish. That I, I just don't know how to mathematically how to mathematically even approach that um, or define that. Uh, and B says, if the particle is in the state like that, so basically, I guess now, assuming all that I've been now talking about, I, I'm assuming that the wave, so here they're saying, assume that the wave function um, of position is a linear combination of, of these and that. So it's a linear combination of either probably being in one or the other, right? Um, Show that the probability density is independent of time. Is it just because it's independent of time because it's not going to change? Like you, you're either in one, like you're either gover go governed by one or the other, right? Because the two regions are non-overlapping. But I'm, I'm, I'm missing, and you know that is part of the, that is part of like the, my, my lack of experience in here is like how to formalize these things. Um, because now, now here we're talking about like okay, they are overlapping partially, and, and so. Uh, and then we're getting into these okay more complicated stuff but how do i how how would i show that so i would i would say i have a wave function so i have a wave function right and i know the particle is either in one region uh so it's it's an omega one so i know that the wave function that um governs the particle location is is this one um and because this vanishes outside of this region, so 
so there is some boundary conditions in here, right? Uh, wave function with boundary conditions. Maybe there's like, how, how do we mathematically approach these? Um, mm, 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 mm. Periodic boundary conditions, boundary conditions. Mm, 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 mm. Except all cookies, that's, that's all we're doing here. So what are we, so what are we doing here? So as long as you're going to part in the box it was relatively easy because the boundaries conditions imposed zero values on the wave function at, at the boundaries. But I'm asking the normalized wave function the same problem imposing just these periodic boundaries conditions. I guess these are periodic boundaries. Um, particle in the box. Let's just go to the particle in the box. See how they do that. Uh, I guess it's I guess it's kind of a similar concept, right? So I would approach it by kind of having like in a way it's like having two wells, right? It's kind of like having two wells, and then saying the position wave function. Quantum mechanics the wave function gives them also another description. Blah blah blah. So the wave function can be found by solving the Schrodinger, the Schrodinger equation. So I guess one way to approach this problem would be to kind of find the wave function and see that this wave function only depends on 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 this one and not on this one, right? So kind of say, um, you know, I'm kind of starting to, I think I'm starting to to get the mechanics of this. So uh, what, what's the, what would be the best way to do that? Like pen, paper, paint, like that's... It's pretty bad though that I'm not ready for this well, but and that this thing is just awfully slow. So I kind of start off by writing a generic wave function, and then I'll probably try to prove that it, um, you know, it's got to stay, it's got to be, it, it, it's got to stay governed by these, that the wave function is actually these. Um, no, 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 no. Because what they do here is they say, the part of it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This system. So you have free particle. So it's a partial differential. It's it's a differential equation, right? And then you have the uh, 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 the kinetic energy, the potential energy, right? Inside the box, no forces act upon the particle, which means that the part of the wave function inside the box oscillates through space and time with the same form as a free particle. Uh, here we're talking about a particle 
just a particle, I can assume that is a fair, uh, yeah, and there's a fair approximation. So this is just kind of like how does the quantum free particle mathematically behave, right? Quantum free particle. So, A free particle with mass m in non relativistic quantum mechanics is kind of uh, with a free string equation or at position r and time t. The solution of the problem is a wave factor. So, the, if, so it means it, so, so the free particle like wave function has these form. Second, guys. Um, Great. That looks like I have just fifteen minutes. <laughs> anyway, I've just been talking too much, but I think I think that's how. Okay, let's at least try to think through how I would do that, and let's then try to approach you tomorrow, um, or even later today. So, if a particle is initially rigid one, so the way that I would approach this, right, is by, is by kind of saying, cool. So, if I have a wave function that it's a linear combination of these two wave functions, because that's all we have, and then I try to prove that. Um, You know, then then by adding like this kind of boundary conditions, right? You would say, well, outside of these regions, the potential is zero, and so it's either one or the other, right? It just seems kind of obvious, but like I don't know. And then if initially the particle is in the state of you know this and that, then show the probability and so it's independent of time. Why would that be? So how how would that be that the probability density function is independent of time? This means that this means that the probability density function doesn't change with time. Mm. But isn't that the same? Like, isn't that the same? Like saying, well, my probability density function is going to be always kind of determined by whether I am, um, you know, whether the particle is governed by by uh, by wave uh, by psi one or psi two, right? And so it's not going to change with time because I can't move between regions. Because that that seems to be that seems to be obvious. But then, like you know, we need to find a way to formalize it mathematically. So now assume that the two regions overlap partially, starting with the initial wave function of case B, show that the probability density is a periodic function of time. And by these, I guess they mean that it it just repeats, right? The way that the probability density because um, I guess if we consider this particle a free particle that then periodically moves between the regions one and two, I guess that is just, you know, then, then it like, then it's, it's like, it's like a, it's like a harmonic oscillator, quantum harmonic oscillator, isn't it? Or like a, no, just like a particle in the box. I don't know, but it's, it's like you, the two regions now can, can, or are combined, you can combine them. And so you can either be. So the free part, the particle is just oscillating. So it's it's always going to go from being just governed by these, being governed by a linear combination of both, or being governed by by psi two. And so there is a period periodicity, periodicity, whatever. Um, it, it periodically changes. Um, because you're changing from you know these three different states. Then starting with the same these starting with the same initial wave function, assuming that the two eigenfunctions are real and isotropic. So what does it mean isotropic? Um, 
Um, isotropy is a uniformity in all orientations. It is derived from the Greek isos. Okay, so isotropic. It means they have presentation uh, in mathematics and physics. When a spinless particle decays or is on decay, the distribution must be isotropic in the rest frame of the decaying particle. Because of the, uh, this follows from the. Uh, uh, uniformity in all orientations. That it, that it, that's what it means. So if you assume that the eigenfunctions are isotropic, I guess this means they're uniform in all directions. So. Take the two partially overlapping regions to be two concentric spheres. Okay, so you kind of have like there are two concentric spheres, right? Compute the probability current that flows through the region omega one. For this, I need to know what current probability is, and and this I need to and this I don't know. I just almost want to take a sneak peek at the third solution. I shouldn't. Um, show that if a particle is initially in region uh, omega one, then it will stay there forever. Like, and I, let's see, does my finger look like, I'll because I have a tight screen, so I'll try to use my finger. Hopefully you don't see it here flying around. And yeah, now yes, but like if I do these, you probably don't, you don't see it. That's cool. So if I, um, how, how would I even approach these? Right, so, uh, So I have basically have, you know, whatever of x t, right? So, and I assume that this is um, some like kind of linear combination of of psi one and and psi two, right? Well, and these are not these are not time dependent. So I think I think these are not time dependent. Correct? They're not time dependent. So, so that would be, I don't know. So this is my starting point. And now what? Um, Like it just in a way it seems that it just I'm I'm feeling stupid because it seems so trivial, like because I I just say well if the two regions are non-overlapping and we know that we're in omega one, and we know that psi two is the one that is related to 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 omega two then I I, I the, by definition right, uh, by definition beta is zero right and 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 this is one. And so, so this means that the wave function is just basically psi one, right? And it doesn't even change with time. Um, it's not a function of time. So, um, it will stay there forever forever right like because it doesn't change so like 
like for all t's, like it's always going to be these. So it's always going to be. I don't know. I'm sorry, but I I have to look at it because I I just I feel stupid, right? Okay, it's pretty short. What does it say? So clearly, um, so clearly, psi xt equals these. Okay, let's take a look at these. And so it implies that the probability, so that the density, the the the, the, the probability density. It's the same like this one, which vanishes outside of omega one at all times. Yeah. Okay. Like clearly, that's what I that that's 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 kind of what I say, right? So clearly, that that is. I think I'm overthinking this stuff. Okay, but what the the way they do it is they. You see, today, today I was today I was diving into this exponential notation here, and 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 what rewatching some of the three blue one brown um, episodes about like this notation, right? Because that comes from the um, Schrodinger equation, um, and 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 the fact that uh, so that's that's a way. Where's the where's the Schrodinger equation? So I I want to know why like like is is it incorrect to do it like this? Like I guess that a right like that that. I, I guess that a would be, you know, that that's that, you know, I, I kind of like I use a and like or alpha and beta or whatever or a and b, um, just generically. But it's in general. Okay, so the Schrodinger equation is a linear differential equation, meaning that if two vectors are solutions, then um, then so is uh, any linear combination. Uh, what the basis states? Okay, so this is the. So th this is the notation that puzzles me, that keeps puzzling me. A choice often employed is the basis of, is the basis of energy eigenstates, which, which are solutions to the time-independent triangle equation in this basis. Time, a time-dependent state vector can be written as the linear combination where a are complex numbers and are solutions to the time-independent equation and this is just what? So you need to try. So holding the Hamiltonian H constant, the Schrodinger equation has the solution that is that is what I'm interested. In. Okay, so that is a solution. Why? Because what I so so the whole thing with the exponential here and 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 h being sort of the, the hamiltonian operator right is that it satisfies the concept that it's the sort of the, the the it's a solution to the concept of like the the derivative of of the wave function being sort of the hamiltonian times the wave function itself right and so so an exponential function is a solution to these that is just like a mathematical fact, right? Because the derivation of, and this is what I was just checking, the, the, the derivation of like e to the power of a times x, so the the the, the, the derivation here, um, whatever that's a notation with respect to x, right? So the, the it, it's actually a times e to the power of ax. 
So it's just this thing times like the function itself. Um, which, which means, because hmm. essentially that's what, the, what, what the, the Schrodinger equation is telling you here is this, right? So saying, let, let's just assume that's like, you know, you move that I times Planck constant here and that's like, it's the differential equation. And so what you're doing is just finding that solution that it's going to look like that. Like that's just a possible solution. Right, the time evolution operator. Uh, and it, it is unitary. And that is also a matrix, right? That's that's an important thing to note. That is an actual matrix. Uh, yeah. This is this is something that I just kind of have to. I I have to in a way burn in my head like. That's a matrix. It just it doesn't look like right because you, it's like e to the power of something and and. For like lay people like me, that's just so confusing. But like each part of matrix is an actual matrix, and so it's just a solution. But but it's just by definition because of the I don't know if the polish is the right word, but like the way that the exponential function behaves, it's a solution to this kind of like um, differential equation, right? That basically says that the rate in which the wave function evolves or changes in time is basically th these times itself. But I, I, I can't remember, like, I, where, is, where, where is the Schrodinger equation coming from? Okay, that's maybe for another day. <laughs> I'll take a look at it later. I think I'll just have to go now. But, but yeah, that makes sense. So that, that is basically kind of you're saying, um, That that this that the solution to the Schrodinger equation is these and yeah we'll see I gotta go.